I hope you were able to achieve a lot in your business yeah because we just don't want you to keep gathering the knowledge and doing absolutely nothing with it every week your business must improve no matter how little let them be an improvement in your business you know they said you can run you can walk you can crawl as long as there is movement taking place you would eventually get there you're better than someone who did nothing at all or who made no progress now that brings us to the topic of today the topic of today is how to accelerate your business growth there are several factors that affect the rate at which your business grows some business grow faster than the rest which is not really a problem you know as long as your business is growing like i said earlier on but i believe that there's one or two things that we can do to improve that the problem is not people that are growing slowly it is the people that are not growing at all the businesses that are not growing at all that is the main challenge so today we're going to be looking at 10 factors 10 key factors that affect um, business growth okay and we're going to be looking at how to come up with an expansion plan a plan on how to expand your business especially for those who are not um, new startups I mean you've had your business for at least six months one year it's time to move your business to the next level you can't keep on on the same spot all right and if you do not have a plan then you're planning on failing so many people have been on the same um spot profit rate um you know for a very long time and it doesn't bother you as long as you make money and you go back home with it that is not the way business ought to be your business should be built to last there are businesses that um, have been out there for over 100 years like we have um, the Walt Disney and several other companies that you know entertained us and gave us products right from where we were small and right now our children are still enjoying from those businesses they don't have 10 heads like I always say they just have a better plan and you know a great team to support the implementation so the first thing we'll be looking at is the vision you have for your business do you even have one where do you see your business 20 30 years from now before we talk about 100 years from now even the bible says that my people perish from lack of a vision if you don't see far of where and the things your business can achieve then who is going to see it for you who is going to help you achieve it you're practically working blindly and it is a very bad way you know to start up your business talk more of those who have been in business for a very long time and don't have this on ground so you need to ask yourself where do i want to see my business 20 30 years from now you talk about the profit plan like what kind of profit what kind of um revenue do i want my business to have a few years from now okay um what kind of customers how many customers do i want to attend to how many products would i want to have few years from now and I can't keep having just one product or okay what am I going to do to ensure that that one product I have um, is sustainable that people will still need it years from now okay you need to think in that direction how many branches of my business do I want to have 20 years from now 30 years from now then you now ask yourself what do I need to do to achieve this this is what leads to your daily operations this is what leads to the activities that you guys work on every day in your business because you cannot just come to work every day and sit down and say oh i don't have much to do today it is because there was no vision so many people pass through this even in their daily lives you know if you don't have a plan for your life 
where you're going to be years from now. You're going to spend your 24 hours like a child, watching movies every second, you know, playing games and doing things that are not going to help you, but rather are going to help the producers of those things. I'm not saying it is bad to do any of those things. My point is, if you spend most of your time playing, being idle, you cannot achieve anything. You know, for you to be able to achieve a, a lot in life, you need to manage your time in such a way that you spend most of it performing activities that will help you achieve your goals. So, when you have a clear vision of where you want your business to be 20 to 30 years from now, then you can start setting goals. You should set your long-term goals, you should set your mid-term goals and set your short-term goals. Your short-term goals are goals from one week to um, two, three years. Your mid-term goals are goals from three years to 10 years. And your long-term goals are, are goals from 10 years to 20, 30 years. You can still break it down. So, first of all, you start with your long-term goals. What do I want to achieve 20 to 30 years from now in every aspect of my business? Then you break it down. For me to be able to achieve this, for me to be able to have, let me say, um, 10 branches of my business in 20 years from now, how many branches can I have in, um, in 10 years' time? Okay, so you can have five branches in 10 years' time. And how many branches can I have in the short term? You will definitely start with one branch. And before three years is over, you can plan to start up a second branch. That is a plan which has been broken down to something you can do today. So when you are setting aside funds for your business, you know that you are setting aside funds for the second branch of your business, which will be um, implemented three years from now, okay? The same thing with your products. I have one product today. How many products can I have years from now? So you can tell yourself that um, in the long run, I want to have 10 products that, you know, is associated with my business. Everybody knows that these 10 products, that is it for us. You can keep improving on the product, but that is it. So if, um, you know, 20 years from now, you have 10 products, that means that in the midterm, you can have five products. And in the short term, you can start with one product or two products. Don't choke yourself up at the beginning. So you do this for every aspect of your business. All right? How many staff do I um, want to have in the long term? You know, in all these branches, how many can I have now? How much profit do I want to be making from my 10 products um, 20 years from now? How many of each product will I sell to be able to achieve that? Okay, how many products will I be able to sell in the midterm to be able to achieve the profit I have planned for my midterm? You can do this for your personal life. It is very effective. Setting goals. You know, they said... When you set goals, you might not achieve them, but you would achieve at least half of what you plan. As compared to that man who has no goal whatsoever. You wake up in the morning, you do whatever you want, you, put, you, you, you go to work whenever you want. You know, goals drive us. They are the fuel that move us. They give us energy. When you have a goal to achieve, you put in everything, your money, your resources, your time, you know, your energy to making sure that you achieve success in that goal. If you are starting a business and you're putting in money, no matter how little the money you're putting into your business, you would want to see that business grow. So the best way to achieve this business growth is to set goals to achieve your vision. Now, the second most important, in fact, the second key thing you should think about if you want your business to grow at a very fast rate, is your target audience. In every episode of this show, I think I have spoken about target audience. That shows you that that is one of the most important things in your business. 
if your target audience are not happy, there's no way, no way your business will grow. You'll be producing things for nobody to buy them. When you call them, they'll tell you, ah, my brother, my sister, money no day. I tell you, even when money no day, people borrow money to buy things they need and they want. So are your products things that people need and want? If not, they're going to keep lying down on your shelf every day, reducing value. So it's not too late. If, if you're not meeting the demands of your target audience, this is the right time to take a look at your business and then start working on that. Because it is very important that your target audience are satisfied. First, you need to define your target audience. Who are they? Who are the people that need my products? Who are the people that will, will use my products? Who are the people that will benefit from the features in my products? When you identify these people, then, sorry, when you define them, then you identify them. Like, where do I find them? You know, who are they exactly? What are their age limits? Uh, the, the best way to go about this is to identify like five people that have bought from you in the past six months. Five ideal customers. They did not give you a headache. They did not complain about your products and all of that. I'm not saying that when people complain about your products, they are not your ideal customers. No, I am saying that for now, who are those people that were satisfied with your products? What are their age range? Are they male or female? What is their gender? What, what location um, do they stay or where is their office? Are they near you? Are they in the same country or in the same state with you? Where they, are they outside, you know? Um, what are their interests? What are their hobbies? What businesses are they into? If they are not um, entrepreneurs, what um, career or what jobs do they have? And what are their income levels? This determines a lot. When you see, you know, the link between these five clients, you would be able to define exactly who your target audience are. That's when you will know that, okay, this kind of person will actually want or need or like my products. Then you will know that those are the people to sell your products to. It is very important. So when you're done defining and identifying your target audience, then you now you know, find out what exactly these people want. It's also important that you identify their location, where you can find them. All right? Like I always say, social media is a place where you find everybody. That's where I'm finding you. Some of you have never seen me before. But here you are watching my show. That's because I am on social media. Your, so your target audience is on social media, are on social media as well. So keep that in mind. You should also know that there are physical locations where you can get your target audience. I always use this example. Are you selling pig and you're in the north? Then I'm in the northern part of Nigeria where we have the Muslims that don't want anything to do with pigs. Then you should know that you're in the wrong place. Either think of a different product or you can relocate, you know. So you can find a product that fits your location so that it doesn't become a problem for your target audience to start getting your products. All right, so they want something from you. They're thinking of how to start going to the park, to send the driver to pick it up. It is stress. Always look for what is most convenient for your target audience. Now, the ideal product. We have said a lot about the ideal product already because there's no way you would ever have an ideal product without having an ideal target audience. But make sure that your product is one whose feature sells itself. Your product should not be hard to sell. Make it simple. It is your duty to make it as simple as possible. 
one way of making your product easy to sell is by getting feedback from your target audience are you okay with my product always ask your target audience did you enjoy my food that i delivered to you do you like the hair i made for you do you like the building i constructed for you what would you rather have differently you know what would you rather i do differently okay would you rather um was i on time did i deliver at the right time at the right price the right quality, those are the things that um, your customers are considering. Those three things, was it the right quality, the right time, at the right budget? So get feedbacks from your clients and use it to adjust your product. That's how you get an ideal product. Most of the um, big companies you see out there, if you check their products when they started, you will see that there has been a drastic improvement on their product. It means that when you're starting a business, your product must not be ideal. Your product must not be perfect. It gets perfect when you get honest feedback from your clients, okay? When you get honest feedback from your clients, you can keep improving on your product. And then having the ideal price. Note that business is not about making profit only. So don't keep your 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 price so hyped in such a way that very few people can buy from you okay give a good um a good price for your product make sure you get the right value for your product sorry i'm choking get the right value for your product and that is what you should sell don't um you know don't say okay um, these are my, in fact, like I always say, use your target audience to know the price of your product. If you are selling a product A to the rich, to the high class, you can sell it at, let me say, 10,000 naira, for example. But that same product, another person that targeted the middle class cannot sell it at 10,000 naira. You can sell it at 5,000 naira. And the one that is targeting the low class will sell it at um, 200 naira. So if you feel that it is that same product that you're selling, that others are selling at 200 naira, think of what value you can add to the product to increase, you know, to increase its worth. So that when you tell them that this is 10,000 naira, they just say, uh-uh, but I sell this thing for 200 naira. You say, madam, no be like that too. My own, I add vitamin C. I can't add cement. <laughs> Whatever product has vitamin C and cement, I have no idea, you know, but I'm just using that as an example. If you want to stick to your price, increase the value of your product and also look for target high income earners so that you don't have issues with ah, the price to cost and then they leave you there. All right. Now, the ideal location. We talked about that before. Don't be in the north and then be selling products to people in the south. Find out what people around you need. And that is what you should sell. So find out the ideal location. If you want your business to last, you can relocate from where you are. Yes, if your business is one that you see that will still be in existence 30 years from now and will be, you know, your source of income for your business, you can relocate. If that is what you really want to sell or what you want to produce or that's the kind of business you want to do and people around your area are not interested in it. Because... It will just, you're spelling doom. Nobody is interested in your product where you are. It doesn't make sense. So please find the ideal location for your product. Then, marketing. If you have the best product in the world and you are not marketing your product effectively, there's no need. It's as good as hiding a golden fish under a lamp. Nobody is ever going to see it. Your product is valuable. You have made so much effort to have a very great product, an ideal product that is useful, but you're not marketing it properly. You know, you need to find out where you can find your target audience in bulk. In bulk, just, you know, reduce as much as possible the time you spend talking to individuals. Look for organizations, associations, societies that you can you know, talk to the chairperson, the chairman, the chair lady, 
and he can convince other people. Or you can join the group, talk to everybody, tell them what you do. If you know that that is the group where you find your target audience, there's a higher possibility of you selling faster. Another important thing we should consider is, like I said, your product should be um, a product that markets itself. But customers that have bought from you should be satisfied enough to refer you to their friends and family. Most business transactions come from referrals. Okay? Nine out of ten business transactions come out from referrals. It is very important. I'm someone who markets people like there's no tomorrow. And it's just by having a normal conversation. Sometimes when I'm done, I don't even know. I, I just tell myself that, see me, you just marketed someone else's business. Your own is still there. It's funny. But then, you see, when you are satisfied, let me give you a little example. I went to a salon one day to make my hair. And the lady was like, ah, oh, madam, I beg, no vex. My style is there on the way. But in the meantime, can I get you some pineapples, watermelon? I was like, hey. She brought it, and I was sitting, just with her. She put on the television. I was watching Z World, you know, and I felt satisfied. Her, her, um, um, her stylist came in like five, ten minutes after. I even had the time to hold on. Let me finish the pineapple so that it doesn't enter. The hair doesn't enter the, the food. So he waited, and when he was done, he made my hair, and I was satisfied with the hair. So everybody I met, I told them about that saloon. I was like, oh, Mossy, I went to the saloon one day. And I was actually very hungry that day. I see the woman knew. And she gave me fruits to eat. And I was like, oh, really? Where is that? You know? So do something different from your competitors that will make your clients promote you unconsciously. That will make your clients talk about you to their friends. You know, like this one, it was just a normal conversation, and you know, I just kept telling people, Oh, I went to the salon, I was so hungry, and the woman gave me um, pineapples and watermelon to eat. So, marketing your product is important. Apart from the physical marketing, I always emphasize the digital marketing. Digital marketing is cheaper, it is faster, you reach out to more people at a shorter time. You know, so that is where you ought to be marketing your products on social media and on your website. Um, a business that wants to last long needs to be technology driven, needs to be able to adopt the latest technology as fast as possible. There's a reason why there's the latest technology, not the technology you're using before. It is because it is more effective or more efficient or it produces your products in a better way, con it consumes less time, more effective, you know, something. There's a tweak to it. There's a reason why there is a later technology. There's a better technology than the one that is already existing. So you should always be on the know. What is the latest marketing technology out there? What is the latest technology for my product? What is the latest technology for my business? So that you can adopt to it if you can. Nobody's saying kill yourself over these things. But you need to know. And if you can afford it, you should get it. Okay? Especially if your business is making good profits. It will help your business in the long run. Now, network. They say your net worth is equivalent to your network. So while you're spending so much time working on your business, you should be spending time building relationships. You need to build relationship with your clients and your potential clients. And like I always say, it all brings us back online. I don't even know what people are doing offline. It brings us back online. Social media is the place you should be to build the relationship with your clients and your potential clients. If you're on social media to sell, it's not advisable. I'm not saying you shouldn't sell there. I'm saying that that should not be the main objective. Okay? That should not be the main reason why you're on any social media platform. You can be banned one day, you know? Isn't all of us that signed an agreement that we did not read with Facebook, Instagram, and the rest? Of course we did. That agreement before you sign up or you sign whatever, did you read it? Because it was too long. 
So you don't really, you don't even know when you're going to break the rules. And then one day they block you. I was reading about um, one actress um, last week that had a problem with her producer. And the producer seized her Instagram account. And she was rendered useless. She had millions of followers. And she just had to go back to her village where she could receive cheaper treatment for her sickness. This happened and she has been there for the past four years. You can imagine, everybody was just wondering, oh, maybe she just didn't want to produce something. But if she had a website, imagine what would happen. So my point is, let your social media platforms be mainly for building relationship, building trust. Your website should be for selling. You can sell from your website to your social media platform. But your social media platform should not be the last bus stop. Never pick a rented apartment over a personal, over an apartment you can own for just a little amount extra on what you pay as rent. It doesn't make sense. Getting a website is very cheap, very affordable. That should be your online store and not an Instagram page or a Facebook page, a Twitter page or whatever um, social media accounts you have. All right. So build relationships there. Say hi to your clients very often. They post something, say hello, engage with them, ask them, post things that ask them questions that they will need to comment on. Okay, don't just talk about your products every day. Add value to their lives. They're a target audience, so you should know the kind of business they're into. So then you should think up information that is valuable enough for their business. Just like what I'm doing with you. I'm building a relationship. I'm building trust with you. Think of how you can do it in your business as well. Now, customer service. The first um, office where I did my IT in Ibadan then, we had this frame. They wrote there, customer is king. And my boss talked to it every day every time if the customer is rude to us and we talk back oh that's the end for that day he's going to talk to us till the end of that day you know it was quite frustrating i didn't understand that until you know i left and started my own business when we don't talk back to the customers he calls us back to the side and you know talk to us and say sorry about that this is life you know you get to learn every day it was a feedback you know I wouldn't accept anybody talking rudely to you, but at the same time, um, sorry about what happened. You know, that kind of thing. But please note, the customer is king. And if your employees are talking back to your customers, because you don't even know what happens to the customer. It might not be about you or your business. It might be about where the customer is coming from. Just a, a smile on the face of your staff can you know, ease the tension from a customer. So a customer comes in, stressed up, talking anyhow, and your employee is bent on satisfying the customer because that should be your customer care objective, to satisfy the clients. So they should start with a smile. They should answer all questions nicely. If they don't have answers to the questions, they should call immediately to find out and get back to the clients immediately they should not leave any, they should not, make sure there should be no missed calls. There should be no emails that are left unanswered. No social media posts that are left unanswered. It is very important you don't ignore your clients in any way. Even if they're not making inquiries about your product. A, a hello requires a hi. So please say the hi to them, okay? And then, you know, those small, small things, the truth about life is that, is this small, small things that matter? I was watching a video the other day and, they were saying that um, the first thing they teach them in military school is how to lay their bed straight, like perfectly well. And you start wondering, please, how is it related to the fact that these people need to go fight war on our behalf in case there's any terrorist group or something? It was a simple instruction, learn how to lay your bed perfectly well, that led to every other training. So that's the same thing with your business. It is those simple things Put a smile on the face when you're attending to a customer. Respond nicely to the customer. Appreciate each feedback. Get back to the customer. Say hi to customers online. If you say today's my birthday, say, oh, on behalf of myself and my team, I wish you the best. You know, I saw this online and I thought you would need it. 
Those things are very important. Every day should not be about selling, selling, selling. In fact, if you have to communicate with your customer every day, three days should be about your products. Four days should be about value addition. And finally, I talk about capacity building. If you're not building the capacity of your staff, your management staff, the junior staff, and yourself, you're so on your own. Your business is like a tree. You are the man holding the axe, and the axe are your employees. If, they, if you keep using the axe on the tree and the axe is blunt, it will take a longer time to cut the tree. But if you sharpen the axe before using it on the tree, it will take a shorter time for you to cut the tree, it means it will take a shorter time for you to achieve success in your business. So, you need to learn how to sharpen the axe. They need to learn how to sharpen the tree. That is how your business will grow. So, make it a regular thing. At least twice a year, they should attend one form of training or the other to improve themselves, to improve your, on your business. You know, the knowledge bound, the knowledge base of your business is directly proportional to the growth rate of your business. If the people in your business are stagnant, they are not growing, no personal development, your business will not grow as well. So these things are very key factors that have caused so many businesses to remain at the same rate. In fact, at a point, you just say, okay, you know, dude, this business is not working. Let me go. It's not about the business. It's about the fact that you're not doing some important things that your competitors are doing, like the things I just mentioned. And if you start doing them, you would see a huge difference in your business. Start today. Don't waste time. All right? So we have spent um, 35 minutes already of our time. I wouldn't want to take any more um, of your time. You can leave a comment. You could leave a message for me. Um, if you have any questions or any inquiries, all right. You can always go to our website, uh, www.tessiafu.online. We have our blog posts. Um, I post at least two, three um, posts every week. You can gain something from there for your business. All right. So it's important that you grow every day. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this is um, value addition <laughs> for your business. All right. To have a lovely night rest. Bye.